Today I'm visiting a couple of properties in central Victoria. It is a beautiful stretch of country and one that is really close to my heart. There is so much to look at here. I love these matted bush peas. They are so pretty. They form a very colourful carpet, don't they? I'm exploring with conservation ecologist Dr Sophie Bickford to learn about the work being done to protect areas like this. We've got stylidiums here, we've got chocolate lilies, there are gorgeous little dianellas, grasses, orchids. It's, it really is a wonderland. The area is filled with spectacular little islands of remnant vegetation like this one. They are so rich with species but they're in a sea of landscape that is so incredibly changed. And without being reconnected to other ecosystems, this biodiversity can't last. It's a bit like an animal in the zoo, really. It's pretty to look at, but it's not very functional. It's not really going to be able to survive, you know, well into the future. And so if we think about a landscape like this, which supports sugar gliders, um, threatened brush-tailed fasca gales, they need to be able to move to other patches like this, other patches of habitat that sustain them to search for food, to search for mates, to escape disturbances such as wildfire. So a connected landscape is really important for the persistence of species. And we've got to remember our landscapes were once always connected. We fragmented them with agriculture and roads and, and urbanisation. So Bilinx is about re-establishing some of these ecological connections that were once there and were once so important for the persistence of species. Dr Bickford works with the Biolinx Alliance. The property we're on now is one of several in a 14 kilometre corridor that they've identified as having high conservation potential. Biolinx then works with private landowners to reconnect their property back into the broader landscape. These private lands contain species that aren't represented in national parks. They really only occur on these productive temperate grassy woodland ecosystems, which are all by and large in private ownership. So it presents a really new approach to doing conservation. It's about bringing landholders along with you and giving them the uh, information, uh, the inspiration, um, the confidence uh, to play their part because that's what it's going to take to stitch this landscape back together, everyone participating, playing a role. This approach appeals to Graham, whose farm is just across the road. If we can link up all of these little remnant bits of vegetation and, and grow these corridors up and more people come on board, with the help of experts, we'll get there, but it's all about education. Graham has now joined the Biolinks Alliance, but he's long been aware of the potential of this property. Well, it had very good remnant yellow box vegetation, grasslands, and I could just see using a reference area across the road as to what you could possibly end up with is if you did protect it. So we figured if we fenced off a decent piece of land off the road there, we'd get migration of the seed and propagation material from the road, because that is a very valuable piece of vegetation along there. The narrow strips of land between our roads and farms are often corridors containing remnant vegetation, so they're a great place to start. Graham put in fencing to widen the area, keeping the cattle out, so it could regenerate naturally. And that was basically five to six years ago we put that fence line in and you can see the stark difference between that side of the fence and that side of the fence. So what you've done is basically take that little fragment and let that spread here, but the cows are still allowed in here. That's right. So a working farm's still got to be a working farm, so take out the country that's reasonably valuable for cattle and what's not that valuable from yeah. a production point of view, it's massively productive from a wildlife point of view. So by using the existing uh, seed bed basically, it's just migrating across the protected area on its own without replanting or anything. I haven't planted a tree down here yet. So you're taking a tiny remnant fragment yep. and turning it into a big highway. That's right, yeah, that's the aim of the exercise, yeah. All types of ecosystems need to be connected, including wetland habitats which act as stepping stones through the landscape. And Graham is lucky enough to have one. So we've got one of the most beautiful spring soaks I've seen here. 
They're fed by groundwater coming up in spring. It's a unique ecosystem full of sedges and reeds and they support a whole lot of unique species that don't occur anywhere else. And the species here need other spring soaks nearby to function and uh, to swap genes with to, to move between. So we need a series of spring soaks across the whole landscape to ensure that this spring soak lives on into the future. Did you always know this was a special spot? Yeah, it, 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 I did. It was uh, always a really nice spot. There was always frogs in, in there, always. Every night you can hear them, basically. From a farmer's point of view, a management point of view, it was just so wet for vehicles and stock. It wasn't, it's just not worth doing. So simple fence around it, it's protected, and the value's gone up dramatically, ecologically. And Graham's place has lots of high-rise habitat too. That is an absolute beauty. This is a granddaddy, this tree. It's a large old tree. Um, I like to think of them as the superheroes of the landscape. They do a lot of the heavy lifting. They have incredible habitat value for many, many species. They also enable animals to move safely through the landscape between patches of habitat. So we really need to look after our elders first and foremost, and you can do that in many ways, perhaps taking off a bit of uh, the grazing pressure if, if you, they're in a grazing paddock, um, a bit of arboriculture if the trees are looking like it needs some help and it's a bit lopsided. So when you're linking that biodiversity, is it about planting trees? A biolink isn't necessarily a continuous corridor of forest. It can be a series of scattered large old trees in a landscape that allow species to safely hop about and move through. And what we need to do when we're thinking about how we reconnect landscapes is think about that variety that's naturally in the landscape and think about conserving all those components in a mosaic. Within that mosaic, the, the farmland sits within that as well. Yes, it can quite happily. If we understand how species move and we design our linkages to facilitate that movement, it's quite compatible with our grazing systems or farms. Even our towns. Even our towns. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. We're very lucky in Australia that we still have much of our biodiversity. It's been lost elsewhere in the world. Central Victoria has more than 2,000 native species. Now this is more species than in the entire landmass of Europe, Great Britain included. So it's huge. But they are in trouble. They're hanging on in these small patches um, and they do need help. Um, the patches need extending and they need connecting. If we decide we want to leave some more space for nature, nature is still just hanging in there and it will come back, and surprisingly easily if we let it. Find out if there are Biolinks projects in your area. Your place might just be the missing piece of the puzzle. <laughs>